copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Kern County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 247 regarding a murder. Assist the officers at Wasco in preventing a lynching. That's all. Rose and Rose. The other day, an acquaintance said... I can easily understand your enthusiasm for Rio Grande crack, Dr. Lindsley. After all, you are the narrator of calling all cars. Well, friends, I'm not ordinarily quick-tempered. But the fellow's insinuations ruffled me so that I snapped back at him. Of course, I think Rio Grande crack is the finest gasoline on the market. But neither you nor anyone else ever has heard me say use Rio Grande crack merely because I said so. I have always, and again, do so tonight. Pointed to the fact that the best authorities connected in no way with Rio Grande, the men who drive the most as pilots of your police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment, have given Rio Grande Crack the most trustworthy and authentic reasons to deserve your loyalty. And all I say is, to those of you who haven't been getting the lightning pickup, maximum power, greater speed, and longer mileage of police car performance, visit the red and white Rio Grande station nearest you in the morning and begin getting it with Rio Grande Crack. This great motor fuel is first in public service and should be first in yours. The story we're to hear tonight occurred in the jurisdiction of Sheriff Ed Champness of Kern County. And we are privileged to have Sheriff Champness open our program. There are many organizations in this country that concern themselves with what they have termed the salvation of the modern youth. A great many of them do enormous amounts of good. Many of them, however, contend themselves with criticizing other activities, especially radio programs such as Calling All Cars. It is my opinion that programs of this nature do a great deal of good in bringing home the fact that crime is a losing game. I think peace officers throughout the state will agree with me when I say that every form that permits the emphasizing of that vital fact is of benefit to the community. The problem of crime among juveniles is one that is causing constant and cruising, increasing trouble to peace officers. And we welcome every chance to stress the fact to boys and girls that crime does not pay. Our story tonight will demonstrate again the truth of this statement. In a little town in the Dust Bowl of western Oklahoma, there lived the family of Jesse Crabtree, aged 19. Is that you, Jesse? Yeah, who'd you think it was? Jesse, where have you been? Out. I've been worried about you. I wish you'd tell me when you're going to stay out late like you did last night. I've told you a thousand times to stop worrying about me, and don't bother me. Well, I can't help it, son. I don't know what I'm going to do about you. You don't have to do nothing. Just leave me alone. Son, why do you talk that way to your mother? Because I'm fed up with your yapping. Did you try to find work yesterday? Yeah, what of it? Well, you're always happier when you're working. You don't get into trouble. Skip it. I'm tired. And if you don't quit belly aching, I won't come home at all. Well, you go lie down, son. I'm going out in the yard to water the flowers. Morning, Mrs. Crabtree. Jesse get home all right last night? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he did. He sure does a lot of running around for a young feller. Yes, I worry a lot about him. I suppose I'm foolish, but Jesse is the oddest boy. He never was one to confide in a person. Even when he was little, I never could reason with him. And when I'd scold him, he'd just act sullen and then go and do the worst things he could to get even with me. Well, you know how it is. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Yes, sometimes I think if I'd whipped him, it might have done some good, but I was always afraid of breaking his spirit. Well, personally, I'd rather have a child with a broken spirit than an ornery one. Hey, Jesse, got a cigarette? I'd be smoking it if I did. What's the matter? You gone soft? Why don't you swipe some? Why don't you get some, wise guy? Don't be stooped. I'd have your luck. If I got caught, I'd get thrown in the can. My old man let me stay there, too. He ain't like your mother, you know. Go on and get some, Jesse. Your old lady will pay for them if you get caught. Ah, every place in this lousy burg hides their stuff when they see me coming. You can't blame them. Hey, wait a minute. See that guy with the satchel? I got an idea. What is it? 
Say, I know that guy. He collects pennies from the gum machines. He comes through every week. Boy, what a soft job. Yeah, he don't have to worry about being stuck up. Boy, if them was only two bit pieces in that bag. That's the point. He won't even squawk if he comes back to the car and his pennies are gone. You mean you're going to steal? No, we'll just borrow them from him. The insurance company will pay him, and everybody will be happy. Well, I won't be, having we're caught. Me neither. I don't think you ought to do it, Jesse. Listen, don't tell me what I ought to do. That's the one thing that makes me madder than anything else. Of course, don't nobody ever ball you out? No, they don't. They don't get away with it anyway. I make them sorry they even tried to ball me out. Look, I think that guy's going in that place to eat lunch. Now, if he just leaves the bag in the car... He did. He didn't even lock the car. I guess there isn't much in the bag. Huh? That's all right. It'll be enough for what we want. Come on. Well, how are we going to go about it? Geez, a guy would think we was going to open a safe. You goofs just stand alongside of the car. I'll get in and put the stuff in my pocket. We don't want the bag. That'd make the guy sore. If anybody comes out of that store, you give me the business, and I'll duck down in the car until they pass. If that guy comes out, we'll all scram. Okay, but I'm going to need a drink after this. Well, maybe there'll be enough for that, too. All right, here's the car. Now, for gosh sake, you guys stop acting like you were seeing a ghost. Just look natural. Gee, I feel funny. What would we say if anybody stops and talks to us? Better not take them long. Here comes old man Gregory. What we do? Speak to him. He won't stop. Hey, Jesse, duck. Hi, Mr. Gregory. Nice day, ain't it? Sociable guy, ain't he? What do you want him to do? Come over and kiss us? Hey, Jesse, hurry up. I'm getting nervous. You guys make me sick. Come on, let's go. How much a gear? You think I'd stop the count at your dope? Take it easy, will you? I think it was about three bucks. Swell. Let's get the cigarettes. Here, you get them. They'll wonder where I got the dough if I try to buy them. Oh, no, you don't. If that guy blats around about his pennies being gone, they'll remember I had some. Yeah, they're harder than if there was dollar bills. You guys are yellow. We got to get them changed into silver all at one place. I'll go in here. You guys wait. Well, well, Jesse, what do you want now? Hi, Mr. Benson. I want some cigarettes. Well, have you got the money? You know, your mother told me not to let you charge anything. She just doesn't have the money to pay for it. Don't give me no lecture. I got the money. Oh, you have? Well, where'd you get it? None of your business. Huh? Well, I'll tell you if you want to know so bad. Ma's got a penny bank, and she sent me down to get the pennies changed into silver. Can you do it, or have I got to go somewhere else? Oh, yes, yes, I'll do it. I'll change it. Funny, she sent you down with it. With a nice mother like yours, I... I don't see why you can't be trusted. Now, if I was your... Just a minute, kid. I want to talk to you. Yeah, what about? Where'd you get those pennies? What's it to you? Somebody just took my collections out of my car. I came out of the lunchroom just in time to see you guys walking this way. And these are the pennies. Listen, wise guy, these pennies come out of my mother's bank, didn't they, Mr. Benson? Well, that's what Jesse told me. I don't think he'd actually rob anybody. But we can find out easy enough. He'll just call up his mother on the phone. Are you calling me a liar, Benson? Well, if your story is true, why shouldn't we have her to confirm it? Either you take my word for it or else. Oh, so that's how it is, eh? Huh? Jesse, I know Mr. Carson here won't have you arrested if you ask him not to. But why do you do these things? Can't you see you won't always be protected out of the sympathy for your mother? Someday you're going to have to pay. I told you not to lecture me. Well, somebody's got to. All right, Benson, you asked for it. Oh, what? what you? Uh, hey, hey, come back here. Mr. Benson, are you hurt? No, not much. It was mostly the surprise. My dear, hitting an old man like you, that little rat is going to jail where he belongs. No, no, thing. please don't do anything like that. I've known his mother for years. She's a fine woman. It would break her heart if he went to jail. He's all she has. She hasn't got much, then. She'd be better off without that, kid. Is Mr. Benson going to bring charges against Jesse, Mrs. Crabtree? Oh, Carl Benson wouldn't think of doing anything like that. He realizes Jesse's young and doesn't know any better. Doesn't know any better than to hit an old man? Well, I've warned Carl not to take Jesse to task. I told him time and again that Jesse's temperament just won't stand for it. I don't know what it was all about, but he must have aggravated Jesse or he never would have done such a thing. <laughs> well, I know what it was all about, and I think you ought to. After all, there are two sides to every Well, story. that's just it. People are always ready to say the worst about a boy that's full of spirit. Jesse has to have someone to take his side. I'm sure he'll settle down when he finds work again. But nobody will hire him until he does settle down. I suppose everybody is prejudiced against him. 
Well, it'll all be different soon. I'm going to take Jessie to California. California? Yes, I have a chance to go in partnership with a friend who runs a little restaurant in Moscow. It's just another small town, but it's far enough away from Oklahoma for Jessie to get a fresh start. Well, I just hope it's not too fresh. Jesse Crabtree's boyish pranks were not over. While his mother prepared for the journey westward, Jesse foregathered with his boon companions, Tom and Jack. Oh, I'm tired of fishing. Come on, let's go. Where you going? I don't know. Anything to get away from here. Gee, I'll be glad when we leave for California. When you going? I don't know. Next month sometime, maybe. Meantime, we got to find something to do. Yeah. Be swell if we had a car. Yeah, you got something there. Maybe we can do something about that. Hey, no, wait a minute. If you mean you're going to steal a car, you can count me out. We ain't going to steal one. We'll just borrow it. Hmm. Sounds good to me. Where are you going to get it? See them people camped down by the river there? Now, they might be talking to letting us use their car. Hey, mister, we got to borrow your car for a few minutes. It's an emergency. What do you mean, an emergency? We got to go someplace, and we ain't got time to answer questions. The key's in the car, Jesse. You guys get in. I'll handle this. Hey, wait a minute. What's all this about? I told you, mister, so don't get tough about it. I ain't meaning to fix flats with this tire iron. Hey, listen, you kids can't get away with this. Oh, don't argue with them, Joe. Let's go call the police. Keep your trap shut, sister. Don't you kids realize the jam you'll get into over this? What will your parents listen, say Listen, they... guy, don't try to ball me out. That's just what you need, a good balling out. I told you to shut up. Put that iron down. Oh, oh. Oh, you've killed him. You've killed him. Shut up. I ain't hurt him much. Oh, you've killed him. I told you to shut up. Am I going to have to choke you to make you do it? <laughs> well, that'll take care of her. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, boys, how do you like the car I borrowed? The bruised and bleeding camper and his wife made their way to a farmhouse and reported the robbery. Jesse Crabtree and his companions were arrested and brought to trial. The overwhelming sympathy for Jesse's mother brought only distorted facts into the evidence. I just know my boy didn't mean any harm. He couldn't do a thing like that on purpose. It would give this community a black eye for a boy to be sent from here to the reform school. I think he should be given probation. I know. It'd just kill his mother if anything happened to Jesse. And this camper asked us to go to the store for him in his car. When we gets back, he says we shortchanged him. Then he made a pass at us. And he gets the worst of it. So he was just going for a doctor in his car when we was picked up. And that's all there is to it. These campers are not like regular citizens. They're always drunk and fighting. I think we ought to do something to protect our own town. So the camper's wife was trying to make him stop fighting us, and he turns around and gives her a bat in the mouth, and that's how she got hurt. I was going to tell the police as soon as we got the doctor, but I didn't have time to. Oh, it's just awful the way everybody takes advantage of my Jesse. <laughs> There has been a great deal of conflicting testimony in this case. Too much of it, in fact. Jesse Crabtree, stand up. I'm going to give you what I think you need more than a sentence. I'm going to talk to you like a father. Skip it. What's that, young man? I said skip it. If you think I'm not guilty, turn me loose. If I had a father, he wouldn't give me no lectures. I don't need them. Jesse, your attitude is your principal offense. I warn you that someday it'll get you in serious trouble. I won't antagonize you because I think you can be helped. Therefore, I release you on probation in the custody of your mother. Hello, Jesse. I haven't seen you since the trial. I hope your narrow escape taught you a lesson. Yes, it did, Mr. Benson. That's why I came down to see you. Well, that's fine, Jesse. Now, if there's anything I can do, I'd be glad to, for your mother's sake and yours, too. There sure is something you can do. You see, I've decided to get a job and help mother until we go to California. Splendid, splendid. I can't furnish a bun, but I'd be glad to recommend you. Oh, you won't have to do anything like that. Oh, I guess everyone in town knows you anyway. Yeah, that's the catch. And that's where you come in. Uh, what do you mean? Well, you can give me the job. Oh, but, Jesse, that's out of the question. There's not even enough work here for me. Oh, that won't matter. I won't be here much, and you won't have to pay me much money. Well, well, what you're getting at, but it's utterly impossible. How old are you, Mr. Benson? Huh? Why, 
I'm 50 years old. Boy, I'll bet you were a wow with the ladies in your day. What are you driving at, Jesse? Well, I just got to wondering the other day why your wife should still be so jealous. If you haven't got anything else to talk about, I've got work to do. You and Mother have been pretty good friends, haven't you? Oh, go on. It's funny. You never know how sly somebody is until you get to thinking about them. Huh? I've got to take my hat off to you. Your old lady would, too. If I told her what I know, it would knock her hat off. I've always believed that in every human being, no matter how low, there was some spark of decency. But I don't believe that any longer. Now, don't get all heated up. All I'm asking for is a few lousy bucks a week for a few weeks. Why, with a perfect setup like that, I'm letting you off easy. I'm being noble. Did you honestly think for a minute I'd pay you because of the threat of a rotten lie like that? Sure you're going to pay me. Now, let's be reasonable. As man to man, you and I know it's not true. I wouldn't think of saying such a thing about my mother, unless I had to. No one would believe such a thing. Certainly not coming from her own... From her own son? That's just what would make it a cinch. You know how this town loves scandal. Even if they didn't believe it, think of the howl that would go around. And think of the spot you'd be in with your old lady. She'd believe it. She's had a lot less trouble to believe some other things about you. And I helped keep you out of the reform. Just in case you still don't know what you're going to do, there's a couple of witnesses outside that's seen plenty. They'll say they did anyhow, because they're going to help me spend my salary. Do you mean you confided in them? Sure. This is a business proposition, and I needed some helpers. I'll show you. Hey, Tom, Jack, didn't I tell you about my job here? Sure thing. Sure thing you've done yet. Now, look, Mr. Benson, it'll be a lot easier to pay off for a few weeks than to have a few years of grief. And I mean grief. Because I've got a few other gags up my sleeve that I haven't told you about. Now, what is it? Play ball or else? You will bring shame and disgrace to your mother soon enough. If you're vicious enough to think of such a thing, you're capable of doing it. I'll pay you. Not because I'm afraid for myself, but out of the deepest sympathy for your mother. Now you're talking. We're going to get along swell. And I know you're going to hate to see me leave. I'll appreciate it if you'll stay out of my sight. How much am I going to be robbed of? Don't get me wrong. I'm not a bad guy. Just lucky. And right now, I'm just thirsty. So you can start with five bucks. Friends are great things to have. They sure come in handy. Well, I'll be seeing you. Well, boys, let's go drink to my new dishonest job. Gosh, do I feel goody-goody. <laughs> Crime sure don't pay. <laughs> Jesse Crabtree drank continuously and stayed away from home for days at a time. In answer to his mother's questions as to the source of his funds, he was evasive as usual. Then on the night before their departure for California... Hey, Tom. Yeah? I got a couple of pints. Let's get your old man's car and wind things up right. Oh, he never leaves the keys at home when he goes away. Well, Jack here can fix the ignition, can't you, Jack? Sure. Let's get it. Okay. We'll serve him right, but never let me have it. I sure don't know what we're going to do for drinks after you leave, Jesse. Yeah, how about letting us in on your graph with Benson, huh? No, I promised him it would quit when I left. I got to keep my word, don't I? Besides, it wouldn't work for you. <laughs> you just don't have my luck. Yeah, I bet you have to listen to plenty of lectures. Yeah, I cured him of that. Nobody's tried that on me for a long time. So hit me shove on this garage door, huh? <laughs> Well, this is something. This is five miles an hour, and we still got the brake on. Why don't you take it off? Let's see if she'll do 90. Hey, you better slow down. I can't even see. Just can't take it. Too bad. Hey, what's that ahead of us? Where? I don't see nothing. Stop! It's somebody in the road. I can't stop. You hit somebody. You gotta stop. It's too late now. I've hit him. But suppose somebody saw you. Some people around that car that was parked by the road. First, we got to get out of here fast. Then we got to think fast. Yeah. I suppose they catch us. Even your luck won't get you out of that. I know what we're going to do. Tom's old man got money. He can get a good lawyer to get Tom out of a stretch. But what's Tom got to do with it? Well, it's his car, ain't it? We'll leave it parked with him at the wheel, passed out cold. They'll pick him up, and he won't know whether he was driving or not. I'll be in California, and you'll have to keep your nose clean by saying we both left Tom in the car after we left the filling station. If you don't, you'll do a stretch, because I'll swear you was driving. Hey, 
Hey, Mom, get your stuff together quick. We gotta start for California tonight instead of tomorrow. Yes, but why? Oh, Jesse, you've been drinking again. Don't start yowling. If we don't get out tonight, I'll go to jail. Oh, Jesse, what have you done now? This is terrible. Listen, it wasn't my fault. Tom was driving and we hit somebody. But I'll get dragged into it if we don't get out of here. They'll blame it on me. I'm always the goat. You know that. Yes, I know, I know. But I told you not to associate with such bad boys. Now, this is what comes of it. Oh, I do hope when we get to California, you'll be more careful who you go around with. Yeah, sure I will. But this ain't any time to start preaching. Let's get going. Well, all right, son. But I do want you to promise me that you'll settle down and help me in the cafe. I know you'll be happier there because everyone won't have the wrong opinion of you. I know everything's going to be just wonderful. But Jesse Crabtree did not work in the cafe with his mother. He became a hanger-on around the various pool halls and drinking places of the town. Then, one day in May 1936, he was arrested for drunk driving by Constable Joe English. What's the idea of driving a car like that? All right. Just give me a ticket and cut out this speech. You've been drinking. This is serious, young fellow. Let's see your driver's license. Sure. Look at it all day if you want to, but just don't talk. Are you Mrs. Crabtree's son, the woman who runs the cafe? Yeah, what's it to you? Oh, well, I've heard her talk about you, but I never thought I'd see you in this condition. I know she'd feel awful if she saw you this way. She's a fine woman, and she's mighty proud of you. I'm telling you, for the last time, don't give me no lectures. All right, Jesse. All right. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget about your being drunk because I know it would hurt your mother. And I'll see that you get a suspended sentence. Now, go on home, and don't you ever let me catch you like this again. Don't you worry, copper. I won't let you catch me. Three weeks later, for the fourth time, English picked up Jesse on the streets, drunk. Jesse, this is the last time I'm going to do this for you. I don't know why I've done it as much as I have. Unless it's because I had a fine mother. And I'll never forget her. And you've got one. But you forgot her long ago. They're just no good. Now, I'm coming around here tomorrow and give you a talking to like you've never had before in your life. And you better be sober. You'd better not come around. Jesse, I've treated you like a father. You know I haven't any grudges against you. I've done everything I can to help you. Aren't you human? What more do you want me to do? I don't want you to do a thing. All right. That's the way it is. But I'm warning you now. And I want you to remember it. The next time I pick you up driving a car while you're drunk, you're going to jail. It's the best and safest thing I can do for you and your mother. Okay, copper. That's the way it is. On the afternoon of August 15th, 1936, Jesse bought a pint of whiskey and consumed most of it. He then bought two quarts of wine and loitering around town consumed the wine at his leisure. Later that evening, he entered into a card game at the Wasco Pool Hall. Hey, there's old Joe Law himself. Hi, boys. Howdy, Mr. English. You want to sit in? He's a cop that can sit in my game any night. Yeah. You like your coppers around here, don't you? Joe English ain't all cop. He's mostly pal. He's the right guy. He talks too much. Oh, all cops do that. You can't hold it against them if they talk right. None of them know how to talk right. But I'm going over and talk to him. I'll talk to him once and for all. Put that gun away. Hey, you nuts. Give all right, English. This is your last chance to make an impression on me. What do you got to say? Put that gun down, kid. You don't know what you're doing. Got him, boys. He's killed me. Shot Joe. Grab him! Let go of me! Come on! Grab him! Come on! Hold him! Come on! 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 As the mob spirit flared, Jesse Crabtree, for the first time in his life, found himself facing a hostile mob. In the faces of these men, he saw no sympathy for him or his mother. This time, there was no one to say, give him another chance. His unbroken spirit had brought him at last face to face with certain death. (laughs) Meantime, word had been flashed to the office of Sheriff Chaffness in Bakersfield, 28 miles away. 33 minutes later, Sheriff Chaffness pulled to a screeching stop in front of the pool hall in Wasco. With him rode Deputy Jack Fox. You stay here and be ready to get underway as quick as you can. I'm going in and see if I can get that kid out of there. Come on, let me prove. Let me we don't need no sheriff here. Now, we can take care of this yeah. ourselves. 
Let's string him up. We ain't going to string him up. As soon as we find another piece of rope, we've got to tie between those cars and drag him apart. Oh, yeah. no, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. There's no point in doing this. Oh, Look here, Tempest. You're sheriff of this county, and we like you. But Joe English was our friend, and we like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, let's we ain't going to let this sniveling rat get away with shooting him down a coal black. Oh, oh, I didn't oh, mean to. I said I was drunk. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, you are drunk most of that time. But you know what you were doing, all right? You're going to pay for it. Now, wait a minute, men. Come on, listen to me. Wait a minute. Quiet. Listen a minute, fellas. Most of you men are my friends. I've known you for years. You helped elect me. Now, I told you when I ran for office that I stood for law enforcement, and I meant it. Are any of you dissatisfied with the job I've done? No, but what's that got to do with it? We ain't lynching you, Sheriff. No, you're not lynching this boy either. There's a law against murder in this state. Doesn't make any difference whether it's one man or 50 that does the killing. It's still murder. And it's still against the law. I told you I was for law enforcement, and I'm going to enforce this one. You can keep me from taking this boy, but you can't keep me from doing my duty. It's my duty to protect him with my life, if I have to. Until he's had a fair trial. What do we want to waste time trying a guy like him for? He's got his rights just the same as you have. He ain't got no rights around here. Now listen to me. Quiet! We've never had a lynching around here yet. We're not going to start now. I know how you fellas feel. I knew Joe English as well as you did. I was a whole lot closer to him than most of you were. And I haven't any more sympathy for this boy than you have. But I'm not going to stand by and see you take the law in your own hands. Oh, Bring him up. Come on. The first crime was bad enough. Yours will be worse. I came here to get Jesse Crabtree to take him to jail. And I'm going to do it. And I'm asking you fellas not to try to stop me. Because if you do, there's going to be some more shooting. And I don't want to have to do it. Come on, Jesse. <laughs> Just a moment, Sheriff Champness will give us concluding facts regarding our program, but before presenting him, friends, I'd like to say that the popularity of police car performance, Rio Grande cracked gasoline, and can't break down Rio Lube motor oil is due to the actual tests of thousands who have tried these two superior products and thus become the friends and customers of Rio Grande for life. They are the finest petroleum products you can buy. And now, Sheriff Champness. On August the 28th, Jesse Woodrow Crabtree was brought to trial in the Superior Court of the County of Kern. And after hearing all the evidence, a jury of 12 men and women brought in a verdict of first-degree murder, but suggested to the court that leniency should be shown the prisoner in respect and sorrow for his poor mother. The court sentenced Crabtree to life imprisonment in the San Quentin Penitentiary for one of the most Atrocious and brutal crimes committed in Kern County. Thank you. It, it might be added that the jury and their recommendation of leniency did not suggest any compensation for the great loss suffered by Mrs. Joe English or her daughter. Thank you, Sheriff Champness. County Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation broadcast 247 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all.